welcome back to the pew everybody i am your host john edwards and here across the table from me as always is my co-host and cohort victor adams john you know it's good to be here because i know it seems like it's been forever yeah. you know um but the great thing is is that i'm looking very ex- forward to you and and the the i guess the the broadening of your ministry heading to new, you know to the holy land yeah it's... you know i mean that's something that's been i you know been seeing you plan for at least a year and a half now and I mean, it's what, a few weeks away? Yeah, well, it's not even a few weeks. Yeah. It's next Tuesday. So. Yeah, so there you go, next Tuesday. So, yeah, so, we'll so by the time you hear this, you'll be gone, right? Yeah, you'll be already yeah, yeah. over there. So when this, yeah. Now, actually, this episode's going to come out tomorrow okay. on this Tuesday. Gotcha. But uh, I've got one with uh, Brother Mariana that's going to come on. I've got some that you and I have recorded, yeah. and then Matthew Leonard's going to be a guest on in the next couple of days. So over the next four weeks, we'll have those episodes come out. Uh, obviously, didn't want to leave anybody that loves listening to the show hanging with no episodes for a few mm-hmm. weeks. So that'll all be uh, coming up. But yeah, I'm super excited about the Holy Land. I mean, there is the nervousness and all those things, of course, that comes from planning something like that and your first time doing it. But you know, I don't think the Lord would have called us to it, and we've discerned it well. We've listened to His voice, and uh, you know, we've got somebody in Father Larry that's been several times. And Select Travel is amazing. Uh, they're even sending somebody from the agency now to go with us since we have two buses. Okay. Um, we planned other that's trips good. that are coming up next year that I'm not allowed to share yet. But if you miss this pilgrimage, we're going to two amazing places next year, and you'll just have to wait. Is that a stay tuned? I can announce it. Yeah, stay it's a tuned. stay tuned. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I'm excited about all those things. Angela is, too. Looking forward to some time with her in another country with 70 of our closest friends, uh, or will be our closest mm-hmm. friends after 12 days, I should I should uh, say, in, in the holiest place of all, the place where our Lord walked and lived and, and taught and ministered and, and, and eventually died for all of us. So um, excited to be over there and experiencing all of that. Uh, before we jump in the show, Victor, today, I want to just go through a couple of things. Uh, a lot of people reach out all the time. And just say, John, how can we support? How can we help? You know, I've been impacted by the show or I've been to, you know, a men's conference where you gave a talk that, you know, helped change my life or, or, uh, you know, I've been to a parish mission in a men's group that you've implemented and been a part of that. How can we give back? And folks, the easiest way I can answer this, whether you're listening or watching is we need monthly support. We need financial support. Like every other nonprofit, you got to get out there and you got to fundraise. And right now, I mean, Victor's so gracious to be in here and help me with the show every week, but uh, it's been me and Lucy for the longest, and we're in a tra- transitional period with her. She's going to move on to actually working at a Catholic school where she's from. Um, so we're looking for some help there. So that's on my plate now for some admin help. But even with Lucy, uh, a lot of the work falls on on me to travel and do those things. I want to broaden what we're doing. I want to bring more people in. I want to train people to do what I'm doing so that they can go out and we can reach more parishes. We're booked up through November, and we already have a lot of ask beyond December into 2024. Uh, We have a lot of big engagements coming up. We're getting in front of a lot of male leaders. We're working with dioceses, and a lot of people are starting to see the fruit of what the Lord has had us doing. And so there's a lot of need out there. There's tons of parishes that have nothing for men. There's tons of dioceses that struggle to have real ministry to men. And we have been making an impact by the grace of God. And it's his work, not ours. We're the schlups he's calling to do it. But through what we've been doing, he's making an impact. And we're starting these amazing groups where men can find uh, authenticity and real relationship with Jesus and with other men. And so if you're somebody out there that's really looking for that, you know, we can help you with that. I'll talk more about that here in a minute. But to continue to do these things, to make those things real and the visions that we have for growing and expanding and, you know, growing the footprint of of the impact we can make, we have to have support. And while it's nice to get those one-time amazing, you know, large gifts, and please, if you're doing that, thank you, and please don't stop. We need it. But, you know, unfortunately, I hate to talk about ministry like this with a business, but there's a business side of it, and you have expenses, you have you know, revenue, things like that. And so you have to be able to make sure that you can, you can afford to do the things that you, you're called to do, right, to grow and to move forward. So the only way we can do that is by really having monthly contributions coming in. So we know where we're at. We know what money's coming in. We know what money's going out. So if you're looking to support us, if you're looking to help us, then first and foremost, prayer. We always need that. I would ask for prayer over anything else ever. But two, we do need the financial support, and it really helps us when we have monthly supporters. Some people say, well, John, I don't have a lot to give. I don't have $100. I don't have $200 or $500 a month to give. What could that possibly impact? Well, I'll tell you what. A lot of people giving $5 adds up quick. So don't discount what you can give. If you have a heart to give that, you feel like you want to support, then give what you can, whether it's $2, $5, $10, $100. 
you know, it all goes to support what we're doing, and it all helps. Just like we talked about in the episode a week ago with the young boy that offered up the fish and the loaves, Jesus took something small and made something happen at large. Like Jesus made it abundant, and he will do the same thing with your yes. So if you're considering that, you can go and become a donor at www.donorbox.org. Or you can go to uh, just to get on the pew.com and there's a donate button in the top right corner of the, of the homepage. You can click that, select your monthly amount and become a monthly supporter. It would We would appreciate it so much. And I can guarantee you that we're going to use your money, your generous gift to grow this ministry and to continue to impact men all over the country and beyond. Uh, Victor, beyond that, just want to give a shout out to the work that we are doing in parishes. There's a lot of people that are reaching out right now. As I said, we're booked up all the way through November. Uh, of this year and we've actually got dates we're starting to fill up for the first part of 2024 we have a lot of diocesan leaders Mm -hmm. that are calling and wanting to get involved in what we're doing a lot of parish leaders it's really starting to float around that that you know the work we're doing is beyond just dropping off a dvd set or or giving a a manual saying here's a how-to we're putting boots on the ground and going out there and helping men build these places Mm -hmm. and really helping raise up leaders the way St. Paul and other people did. I don't want to compare myself to saints like him, but following in the methodology they used of going and teaching others and raising up other leaders to do the work and then moving on to those other places while encouraging the people where they'd been, but encouraging new people in new places to do the same. That's really what we're doing. We're pouring into leaders. We're spending our time not only just allowing something that's going to feed the people coming to the group, but spending time and building a place where leaders can be fed, taught, and they can find that confidence to go out with a structure, right, handing them a plan so they can go out and implement this in their parish. So if you're a guy that's looking to be with other men in authentic relationships, to have, you know, leave the mask at the door, to find your faith in a way that you haven't before, and do it alongside other men that are looking to do the same, then go to our website, just to get on the Go to our events at Book Me page, and you can click on uh, the minister, men's ministry page there, or you can scroll to the bottom and click the Book Me form. Within the next two weeks, we're going to have our new website launched, which will be all about men's ministry. So there'll be places all over the homepage and everywhere else to click to get involved in uh, starting a conversation with us about coming to your parish, your diocese, to do the work that's going to help you get men's groups going in your area. So thank you for listening to that, guys. I know sometimes people probably get tired of hearing the little infomercial in the beginning, but it really is the only time we have to reach the most people uh, and make an impact in either getting out what we're doing out to more people or asking people for support. So thank you for being kind and listening to that. Victor, let's jump into the show. Let's do it. So you were asking me before the show, what are we talking about? You know, you, you, I didn't have a chance to go over it with you, you know, before you got here today. And it's really, the show today is going to be talking about, are you listening to the right voice? Mm. And it's funny, before the show, you know, today, as you mentioned, we have the pilgrimage coming up, which is the first time I've done that. So obviously there's a lot of, a lot of you know, logistics that go right, into it, right, a lot right. of things that can worry you if you're not careful. Um, first and foremost, being in a, you know, 12 hours away in another country from your children, all that kind of stuff. But then leading, you know, 71 people is what we have, um, you know, in, in another country. We have guides and all those things. But you do have a responsibility, and there's a lot of things that have to be taken care of. Got a phone call. My dad's having an emergency surgery right now. Um, You know, he's had some issues over the last year, and they just continue to uh, struggle with those things. So he's working on that right now. Angel had a wreck the other day and dealing with insurance and some things that aren't turning out right with that. So a lot of things right now could be just clouding, you know, my mind. And I know you have a lot going on with your family situation and work and all that stuff. But, you know, Victor, the thing is – A lot of times we feel that confusion, we feel that anxiety, when we feel that worry, it's because we're simply not listening to the right voice. And, you know, as I thought about this show topic, it really stemmed from two things. You know, we're recording this the Monday after uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. And as we know, we, we, we hear the reading there and Jesus is talking about, I am the shepherd, I am the sheepfold, I'm the gate. Uh, You know, he talks about my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Um, so that was speaking to me yesterday as I was at mass and really just entering into those readings and, and that call from Jesus just to listen to the right voice in our life and to recognize that voice that we need to be following. Well, Angela and I had some time last night too, where we sat down with the kids and we wanted to watch something and Mm -hmm. Angela's in grad school. So it's, it's rare that we get time like that to do those things now between her job and grad school. But she wanted to watch this movie that I had actually uh, bought when the, I had, you know, Friar Fest at my house a few weeks ago. And we had five friars here when their flights were canceled. 
some of them wanted to watch a you know some TV and a show, and so we watched the movie Jesus Revolution. Gotcha. Okay. So if you know you said you hadn't seen it, but uh, it's a movie that came out a while ago with Kelsey Grammer, I think's his name. He used to be on Cheers and mm-hmm. a lot of stuff like that. Famous actor, and then Jonathan Rumi's playing a, a role in it too. And it's really a uh, it's it's a true it's based on a true story of Jonathan Rumi's character, a guy who was in the in the enlightenment movement of the 70s if you will a hippie and mm-hmm. you know into the drug movement and sex sex drugs and rock and roll sexual revolution stuff and then kelsey Grammer plays the role of a of a pastor of a small church a calvary chapel church is what it was called gotcha. and at that time you can imagine the tension with the with oh, yeah. the hippies and the, and then the 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 old timers if you will the the, the, the it's normal people the if established you will. members yes yeah. Yeah, yeah and all that's going on you got the Vietnam War you got all this revolution and the older people thinking what's wrong with these people and all this stuff and so you know Kelsey Grammer's playing the role of this pastor and, and he's got a fledgling church like when it shows him giving his first sermon there's probably like ten people in the pews and so he's I've, dealing I've with been that. there right yeah I've been but, there back in the day right yeah. But obviously, it's a Protestant church, right. so pastors paid, you know, by the congregation and mm-hmm. all those things. So um, all of a sudden, his daughter picks up this character of Jonathan Rumi on the side of the road in a rainstorm, mm-hmm. brings him home, and uh, you know he's and the daughter's struggling with drugs and all that stuff, and she's a teenager, so she's in the midst of all that and fighting her mm-hmm. dad with God. Well, all of a sudden, you know, she says, "Well, this guy's outside, Dad." And he knocks on the door, and, and he's like, hey, man, far out, nice house, you know, and he's dressed like a hippie. He looks like John the Rumi in right, The Chosen, but right. he's got hippie clothes on, you know, beard, long hair, and all that. And so he starts sitting down, and he starts talking up to this pastor about why he thinks that he needs to have a conversation with him and listen to him. And he's saying, look, all this generation is looking for God, like the acid and all this stuff right. and all the sleeping around. The expansion and, of the mind was really right. wanting something divine to come to him. You yeah, know, to, and so all these people, he's, he's basically saying, like, look, do you not see it? And he's like, what are you getting at? He says, do you not see it? This is all a search for God. Like, mm-hmm. they're looking for God. And, and he says, I don't get that. And he says, they're chasing all of these things, trying to enlighten themselves, but really it's right in front of us. He says, that's what happened to me, and blah, blah, blah. And so long, at the end of it, he goes to him, and he basically says in that conversation, look, we, you say you have the answer, but yet your doors are closed. Like, you don't accept us. Yeah. And so Kelsey Grammer comes to this realization of like, man, I, I got to listen to this guy. So we invite someone to their church. They get abandoned there. All this stuff starts. And then, of course, the elders are getting angry, and they're mad and all right. this stuff and, and tell them, you know, what are you doing, these hippies? they take Their, their, their feet are muddy. This, they're this messing up ha- our carpet. Right. This isn't how it's done. Right. 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 Yeah. If, if We understand you want to fill the pews, and you got right. we've got bills to pay, but is this the right way? And so all this happens, and he's feeling the pressure from the congregation. And so this scene – that came on that really caught my attention and tied back to the Good Shepherd is Sunday is he's sitting there in the dark with his wife and he's watching TV and he's feeling the stress of all this and they're cuddling and on the TV is all the Vietnam stuff and the mm-hmm. war and the protests and just the loud voices and all of a sudden you know Kelsey Grammer just kind of sighs and he says you know there's so many voices it's hard to hear the truth you know and here he is the pastor the one that's supposed to know all this and his wife kind of looks at him and says, you know what? The truth is always quiet. It's the lies that are loud. Mm. And it really hit me. I was like, man, isn't that the truth? Like, yes, they were living in that time and had all that going on then, but look at the mess we live in now and look at the confusion and, and just the, the the world, the flesh and the devil beating on us all the time, trying to lead us away from the shepherd with all these loud voices and, and try to overpower you and almost beat you into submission. But he goes on, and when she says that, you know, she says the truth is always quiet, and it's the lies that are loud. And he does what we all do, right? He goes, yeah, but it's complicated. And she goes, the truth is always simple, Mm -hmm. right? The truth is simple. And again, it was like getting hit in the face twice, like a double punch, like a jab and a a straight right. Right. Because I was like, man, this is exactly like on Sunday evening of the story of the Good Shepherd, right? Good Good Shepherd Sunday, when Jesus is sharing this, um, it just hit me because he has the line in there. Where he says, you know, my my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so here it is just all together. It made me start thinking like so many people are struggling in the world today. And so many people write into us about just the troubles they're having and the addictions they're in and, and the past that they've gotten off on, right? Like getting off the, the beaten path and getting off on these trails of that lead to destruction and loneliness and isolation. And it just brought me back to go like, are we listening to the right voice? 
Because what that yes, that's a movie, but even those Franciscan friars when they were sitting there, when they heard that, they were like, Wow. Mm-hmm. Like that's a truth bomb. Like, yes, everything that that is taking us away is loud and it's screaming and it's noisy. And all that's not what we're supposed to be listening for. We're supposed to be listening to the voice of the shepherd. And so I just thought it was one of those things where I was going, what are we going to do on a podcast tomorrow? And then those two coincidences happen in the same day. Those two things come together, and here we are talking about, are we listening to the right Right. voice in our life? Well, the voice you're talking about, obviously, is Christ, You know, and the sheep are us, Um, those that know him through um, baptism, but also confirmation and, and just the willingness to give their heart to Christ. Um, we are supposed to be attuned to hearing his voice and, and to, to listen to his voice, but yet, for some reason, we don't always do that. You know, we have this other voice, ourself, that says sometimes, I know better, you know, this is where this is what you need to do. And usually when we listen to that voice, that other voice, it causes harm and injury to those that love us the most. Sure. And, and I think that is something that we always have to realize is that, the voice I'm listening to has more value behind it than this self-driven desire for whatever it is at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the, the thing is, I mean, it's not just our own voices. It's the voice of the devil. And then, well, yeah. you know, well, people yeah. just, we consume so much media now. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's it's right there on your phone all the time. I mean, all the different streaming services and the social media stuff and all of that. and And so you're getting inundated with just influences all the time, right? Whether it's buy these clothes, do this, do that, drink this beer, do that. I mean, there's just so many different influences, right? Or you turn on the news and and you can just, depending on what news station you're listening to, CNN, Fox News, whichever they lean, left or right, you're just getting that viewpoint and you're inundated with that. And you don't realize how much that stuff influences you. Pretty soon you're like, Maybe I do need to buy those clothes. Maybe I do need to drink mm-hmm. that beer. Maybe I do need to start thinking more like, you know, the Democrats instead of the Republicans or or whatever it is, or the Republicans instead of the Democrats. We are influenced by so much stuff, and we don't realize that simply like where we're spending our time is the voice that we're going to listen to. And, and, you know, I can even hear it, you know, now in my life when I'm raising kids, like some of the things that I never thought I would, you know, say to my kids because I didn't like the way I was, you know, talked to that way by my parents or my dad or whatever, mm-hmm. I hear come out of me. And it's just like you can't help when you're listening to the wrong voice in your life to be influenced by them, by any voice in our life. And so we have to be really protective of that. And and the thing is, most people, we don't even know how to tell. We don't even know the voice of God because it's being drowned out by so much other stuff. You know, you look at this and the world, the flesh, and the devil are loud, right? The narrative of the culture is loud. Look at it right now. Like, if you even try to speak truth, you are yelled and shouted down. Whether it's the just the the, the uh, gender dysphoria stuff. You know, I was listening to Matt Walsh the other day, and you know, he's a guy that's, that 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 gets out there and speaks the truth about that particular issue about gender dysphoria. And, you know, uh, the 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 male and female being truth that there are two genders. There's not you know, all these constructs that people have made. And he speaks about that. And he was sitting there getting like just beaten down and people outside of his house and people had hacked him and given all his personal information about and his home address and shared all his personal emails. And it's like that, those voices that Mm -hmm. attack us, the world, the flesh and the devil, the ones that are against truth are so loud and they're trying to get you to submit. And he was talking about like how he had to hire full-time security and all of these things now to be in his house with him. Like not just when he goes somewhere, but around the clock security. The world, the flesh, and the devil are so loud with these things. And it's not just gender dysphoria and all that. It, it's against pro-life, right? It, it, you see these, these rallies and there's the pro-life rally and it's peaceful and it's quiet and people are marching. But then you see the the other side of it and people are screaming and throwing things and Pain, you know, throwing pain on people and yelling, you know, all this stuff. And the thing is, the narrative of the culture is loud. The bad influences in your life are loud. The temptations are loud. You know, I think about whenever uh, I, I have a moment where the devil puts a snare there, right? Your conscience is sitting there going, hey, John, you know what to do. Or, Victor, you mm-hmm. know what to do. You know what the right thing is. You know what God would want you to do. Yeah. Very yeah. quiet, very passive, very, not passive, but it's there, just consistent. Right. But then what happens? But you know you deserve this. You just need that drink, or you need that porn, or you need this, or or you deserve this, or that anger was justified, and you need to keep doing this. Those voices are loud, and they're trying to overpower uh, overpower that quiet, still voice, that voice of the truth, so that you start to give into it. 
And they're trying to overpower your conscience and all that so that they drown out your morals and your that call that we have within us to to you know to be heroic and to live a life of virtue. And so, you know, those those voices bring worry and anxiety and indecision. Yeah. You know, those are the things where we're losing peace in our life. But again, when we're not seeking out the true voice of the good shepherd, we're not seeking out the voice of God in our life, the voice of Jesus, then then we don't even realizing how much even being in a place in a place where you can hear these, whether you believe them or not, how much you're being influenced by these things. And that's why sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of a day where you just feel so over anxious and you feel so stressed out, you feel so worried and just almost, you know, in despair is because we're being influenced by these other voices and we're listening to the wrong ones. Well, going back to say the narrative of the culture is very loud. Well, it is. It's on, it's in everywhere you look, you know, with your phone, your, your feeds through your social media, uh, everyone has different opinion. I understand that. But when it's backed by aggression and finger pointing, saying that, you know, you, you people, you know, you say God loves everybody, but then they, they kind of, you know, trash that in a sense. Well, yes, we love everybody, but there's a standard of necessary of behavior, moral behavior, Yeah. you know, um, and it's 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 you're right. It's like that that stance is kind of being lessened and lessened overall in in the media, you know, yeah. in the 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 public uh, stratums of uh, of opinion. Um, and it seems like when people who are trying to speak truth uh, through the body of Christ, it, it seems as if they're being taken off, you know, like they're just being picked apart. Um, and it's tough to stand up against a wave of of uh, influence that seems, you know, damaging, you know, yeah. and, and harmful because people, in, if they, they, they spite you, they will do whatever they can to dishonor you, yeah. you know, and I think for those who are faithful people, we know that there's things that we can't control over, but what we can do is try to live the best life we can. You yeah, know? and continue to stand up for the truth. And that's, right. you know, as you were talking, I was thinking of Pilate and Jesus and the crowd as a good example of where we can be in our life. You know, mm-hmm. Pilate... You know, by all means, and in, in some of it, he was trying not to crucify Jesus, right? He was trying to, this man's done, to, done nothing wrong, and mm-hmm. he's asking Jesus. And Jesus said, for this I was born, to come into the world and testify to the truth. And what is truth? Like, Pilate's asking these questions, but what happens? Like, even though he's worried, whether it's because his wife, you know, had the dream and said, don't crucify Jesus, whatever his reasons, he didn't feel like he wanted this that Jesus was deserving of that punishment. Yeah. But what happened when he went outside and tried to stand up to the crowd, the shouting, the yelling, crucify him, crucify him, as we all partake during Holy Week and the recounting of that. Like we start hearing all this, and then you know the Jews basically telling him, you're not a friend of Caesar, right. and screaming and yelling. And he listens to the wrong voices in his life. And what happens, he gives in, and he says, you know, he tries to, I'm washing my hands and I'm done with this. But... He wasn't ever done with it, right? That was on him as much as it was anybody else. And so we can find ourselves in the same situation where we're trying to wash our hands of the truth when, because these other voices are loud. So we have to learn how to listen to the voice of the good shepherd. We have to listen to the right voice in our life and how to learn how to do that. And the thing is, when people ask me that, well, John, how do you hear God's voice? What is the right voice? How do you discern? It's the quiet one. Right, it's the quiet one. It's the one that's not shouting. It's the one that's not domineering. It's not. It's the one that's that's that doesn't bring anxiety and worry and peace. And I mean, it brings peace, but not worry and anxiety and doubt and despair. And you know, it's in the quiet. And we even see that in the Old Testament. You know, if you go back to First Kings nineteen eleven and twelve, you've got Elijah, and he goes to the mountaintop, right? And I think it's Mount Horeb. And he's that's on, it. and and uh, and he's going to to listen for the Lord and. It says, uh, it says in, in verse 11, he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And that's when he heard him. When everything was quiet, when everything was still, when everything slowed down, right? He heard the voice of God and he had a conversation with God. This is a hint to how we start to find that right voice in our life, how we start to tune the noise out, right? Jesus, 
isn't the one. Just, Jesus isn't loud. He's not accusatory. He's not hateful, right? He's not. He doesn't bring worry. He brings peace. He's the good shepherd, and this is what he means when he says this in Scripture. Again, John ten twenty seven. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He says this in um, in John ten three through five. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hears his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all uh, out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. In Isaiah thirty twenty one, it says, And your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, This is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. Right? This is 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 our Lord saying again and again, like, I'm in the whisper, I'm in this quiet, I'm in the silence. Hey, one of my favorite books was one written by Cardinal Sarah, and it was about silence. Mm-hmm. And it really taught me a lot about you can't hear God in the noise. You can't hear God in the hustle and bustle. You can't. It's hard to hear God when you're running on the never-ending hamster wheel of life, you know, night and nothing, try to keep up with all of what the world and the devil and the flesh is trying to distract you with. We have to be very good about taking time to step off of that, right, and listening and, and discerning, right, through those voices, you know, when I think about sheep herding and just herding people in general, because that's what the culture is trying to do too, right? The church is trying to shepherd us into this place that we need to be, which is heaven, and shepherd us along the path to eternal life and the life that we have to live to get there. But then you have the world that's trying to herd you away from all of that and herd you into its designs for mm-hmm. you. So when you look at the imagery of that, you have the sheep that Jesus used to, he loved to talk about all the time, right? And it's all through the Bible. David, King David was a shepherd, right? There's, there's just all this, this, um, this metaphor through used through that throughout the word of God. But you look at sheep herders and they're not behind the sheep, like whipping them or, you know, prodding them or screaming or, or making loud noises. They're walking. It says traditionally, you know, when I was looking at, at sheep herders, they traditionally walk in front of the sheep. They're, the sheep are watching, but they're following because they know their voice, right? They're, they said that sheep herders would normally sing or they would speak to the sheep mm-hmm. so that they would recognize the condition them. of voice, yeah, yeah. Right, and then if they had some that were running off and leaving, then they would like break a leg and then put it over their shoulder. That's why the image of Christ you know, carrying mm-hmm. the lamb or shepherds carrying a lamb is because they would break the leg so they couldn't run off and they would have to carry it, and then it would become accustomed to the voice of the Lord. I mean— why do we suffer, plus, right? Sometimes we're running off right. and we have to suffer to come back to the Lord. Plus they would know the scent of the shepherd. Right, too. they would yeah. know the scent. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and that's what, you know, Pope Francis calls a lot you know, for pastors and other people is, you know, we need to smell like the sheep. But um, my point with that is the, the shepherds are walking and they're peacefully leading these sheep and they're not screaming, they're not doing all those things. You look at like herding cattle, which is a lot of what our culture, our culture, uh, yeah, culture tries to do. Mm-hmm. They're trying to like set a trend or make this popular or make this certain belief become the, the overall belief to knock truth out of the way and to allow this to become the new narrative like the gender dysphoria and, and you know, the stuff we've seen with, with abortion in the last few years. And that's almost like people herding cattle. Cowboys are behind cattle. They're, they're, you know, they're whipping things. They're shooting guns off. They're screaming. They're yelling and trying to herd them in a certain mm-hmm. direction. This is what we need to remember when we're in these moments of what we're trying to discern. Do I feel like, am I listening for the voice that seems to be quiet and peaceful, that's leading, that's walking out in front of me, that's directing me? Or am I moving and making the choices I'm making in my life because I feel like somebody's behind me and rushing me along and yelling at me and screaming at me and and demanding that I make certain choices? Mm -hmm. That's going to help you start to discern some of this. and, And really, it brings us to what are we trying to give our time to? Right? What are we spending our time doing? Are we are we spending our time doing the right things? Because there's only certain ways you're going to be able to listen to Jesus in your life. You're going to be able to hear that that voice that we need to listen to. The other things that we're listening to when we're affected by are the time the time we're spending on social media. The time are you sitting there every night watching the news and going, "Here we are again. The world's going to hell in a handbasket." Yeah. And here's the different ways it's going that way tonight. What are we allowing to influence us or influence us in our life? And what are we giving time to? Because the thing is, at the end of the day, Victor, where we spend our time is where we're going to be influenced, right? If, if we're spending time on good things, we're going to be influenced to live those good things. If we're spending time in the negative things, and that's why I don't watch the news. I live in Memphis, Tennessee. Why do I ever want to turn on the news? You're going to hear one good thing at the very last three seconds of the news. And the first you know, 45 minutes or however long that show is, is going to be murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, steal, rape, pillage. Uh, all this stuff, it's going to do nothing but highlight the negativity in the world, and it's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. 
right? Or are we going to go spend time doing the things we know as Catholics and as Christians that are harder and that we may not want to give the time to, that we also convince ourselves we're too busy to do? Are we going to put in that time and that effort to do that? Because that's the only way that we're going to know where do we need to go in our life as a church and in this culture. Well, I see you have a how-to down there, so because it's always good because you know we give so much good information. Yeah, we assess kind of like the need, we dissect the problem, but yet you know the solution is something that's always difficult because that means work. Yeah, we sure. have to progress <laughs> towards something, fight against our internal struggle to you know because no, I don't want to do that. that. Doesn't feel right, or or that that's too much for me to do. But we have to identify like who who are we want who are we who should we be? Yeah. Who do we need to be? We, we need to be a light for others, right? Sure. So being light by it for others, it means you have to burn, you know, intensely for something, you know, for Christ, for sure. love. And, um, you know, it's 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 a great way to live. It really is. It's just, you know, you have to avoid the, the chaos and the mess. It just kind of piles up around you and just, you know, go straight ahead. Well, and so, you gotta you got to choose the right influencer, right. right? That's the thing. I mean, influencer is a huge way, word right now. People would use that to describe us on this show, Deacon Jeff on his, uh, who's on the other side of the camera, anybody that has any sort of platform, if you will. So are you choosing the right influencer, mm-hmm. right? I mean, uh, are you listening to the right shows? Are you listening to, to, to things that bring you back to Christ? Or are we spending our time – like in things that, that, that don't matter and that lead us away from them, right? Yeah. Those are the choices we have to start making in our life. But as far as how-tos, like I really have three written down here. You know, one, we need to slow down. You know, we need to slow down. The world is designed to get you to speed up, right? If you're too busy, you're not, you're not, you're not slowing down enough. You don't have enough time to pay attention to Jesus, mm-hmm. right? Keep them so busy, so distracted, and that's the riles of the devil, right? We've heard it in, in in the screw tape letters and all that. If you read that book, that book makes you feel like you want to take a shower immediately after after reading it. But the whole thing in that book, which was brilliant by C.S. Lewis, was every time a thought was coming into the, the person's mind that was from God, or as they called the enemy, they did whatever they could to distract them. Right. That's all the world is doing. Be louder. Be be you know you. We're going to sit here and bang drums and have a megaphone while Jesus is over there whispering. Right? We're going to get their attention this way. So we need to slow down. You can't hear Jesus when you're too busy to stop and listen to him. Right? We need to be intentional. Right? This is the thing. Like we're intentional about everything else in our life. You know, we're intentional that we got to go to the grocery store. We're intentional that we got to go to the gym. We're intentional that we have to go to work. You know, we're intentional about all of those things. We need to be intentional in our spiritual life about when we're going to sit down and listen to God, Mm -hmm. right? Because outside of Sunday, let's be honest, a lot of us aren't doing it. A lot of us aren't doing it. We're there for an hour and most of the time, for a lot of people, we're not even listening when we're there. We're distracted. We're thinking about whatever else we have to do. So we have to be really intentional in our own lives. I know we have kids and we have everything else and jobs and but you have to carve out time in your life to sit down and listen to God, right? Right? To sit there and and listen to what He wants to say. Because how can you recognize the voice of somebody that that you don't spend time listening to, mm-hmm. right? If if you're walking through a crowd and you hear somebody say a sentence, four word sentence, one time in your life, do you think if you were in a room with that person again, you would ever recognize that you'd ever been in a place with them and through the through the few words you heard their voice? No. Now people can. You know, if I'm somewhere and they've never seen a picture of me and they hear my voice and they listen to the show, I've had people go, man, I know who you are. Why? Mm-hmm. Because they've listened to us. They've spent time, hours listening to the show. But if we're just sitting there, hey, Jesus, how are you, blah, 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 and not listening and going off and not doing the work, putting the work in to figure out and understand and, and spend the time pouring into the relationship, we're never going to be able to recognize his voice because we right. don't spend time listening to him. Yeah. And so, you know, we've got to be able to to sit down and spend time in his word. Like people say, well, well, how do I hear Jesus' voice? Well, for me, it's in his word. I don't hear the voice of God come thundering down from the roof of the room when I'm reading the word. But what I do start to pick up is the language he uses, right? His tone, his demeanor, all of that, especially when in the New Testament with Jesus, you start to hear the narrative of how this this is a good picture of who Jesus is and how he speaks. This is how I need to listen for him in my mm-hmm. life. When I'm in these moments of decision, when I'm in these moments of stress, I know the type of voice I need to be listening for because I've learned it through reading his word by understanding who he is. You know, we need to spend time in prayer by sitting there and listening to him and thinking and contemplating who he is, right, and what he's about. That's what prayer is, is, is a conversation. But a lot of times prayer is just contemplating God, the goodness of God and who he is and asking him to reveal himself more to us. Mm-hmm. It's in those moments that we start to understand it. 
for a long time in my life, even when we started the ministry, it was very hard for me to hear God. But I had to slow down and spend hours in adoration, sitting in front of the Blessed Sacrament, right? Sitting in front of the tabernacle after Mass, not rushing off, but just giving God some more time in my life. So frequenting the sacraments too, right? Going to that, going to confession, experiencing who God is through His mercy and grace, mercy and grace, mercy and grace that's poured out during the sacrament. As Deacon Jeff said on an episode with me a couple weeks ago, eat more Jesus. Allow Jesus, the person of Jesus Christ, to become one with you. You can't get any more personal than that. You can't you can't recognize someone more than right. than that, right? When they're part of you. So we got to frequent frequent the sacraments, and then finally, we need to be patient, right? We need to be patient people. Most of us don't hear Jesus in the first three seconds we sit down to do something, right? There, you got, you got to give them the five second rule. You can't give them the five second rule and move on, right? right? right. You have to be able to sit there with them. I mean, just like I said, you can't recognize a stranger's voice in a small passing moment. You have to be able to spend time. Mm-hmm. And so we're so quick these days to simply just go, you know what? I sat down, I prayed for two seconds, nothing, I got crickets, I'm done. Right? We can't be that person. We have to sit down. God is will give you all the time that, he, that you want in his life. Right? right. He, he is waiting for that. We have to be willing to give him the time in ours. So that's what I would say, Victor, is to slow down, to be intentional, and by being intentional, spend time in His Word and prayer and the sacraments, and then I would I would sit down and learn to practice patience and wait on God because it's not in our time; it's in His, and that's mm-hmm. a rule that I think we all need to know. So we're coming here to the end of the show, Victor. We've gone a little bit longer than we normally do, but I think this is an important topic. For those of you again who've listened and enjoyed this, I would ask you to consider becoming a monthly supporter. You can do that again by going to justagainthepew.com. We need it so that we can help other people figure out how to listen to the voice of God and how to discern that in their life. Make sure they're listening to the right voice and how we can help build places for people to do just that. So, Victor, let's take all of this and the intentions of those listening to prayer right now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, the world is so loud and seems to get louder by the minute. There are so many voices trying to lead us in so many wrong directions. Help us to understand that the truth is simple, and we find it by simply slowing down and entering into the silence. And, Father... Whenever we find ourselves trying to find our way through the noise, remind us to listen for that small, still voice of your Son, the Good Shepherd. In the name of the Father, and the Son, Son, and the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, amen. amen.